Hello, friends. Hello, everyone listening this morning. It is December 22nd, 2012. This is Reha, your host, with The Ninth Minute, a show about the Mayan cosmogenesis and the end of the world. The big news today is that the world did not end. As we are still here, talking to each other, and contemplating how we're going to spend tomorrow, shopping for Christmas, maybe visiting with friends, or maybe just recovering from the end of the world party in which we all participated. I am currently at a party, and it is very fun, um, which is why I am not in the midst of it, but have chosen to isolate myself into one of the rooms to, to be able to do this broadcast. This show marks the end of a chapter. As the Mayans predicted, this is the end of a time cycle in the history of the world. And it marks an alignment that occurs once every 26,000 years. As some of you may know, alchemy, the science which was the precursor for chemistry, very much connected um, the matter, the world of matter with the world of energy. The purpose of alchemists was to navigate between these two aspects of our existence, matter and energy. The ancient alchemists are the ones who first attempted to transmute uh, lead into gold. Now, That would have been called magic at the time had it occurred. They attempted these experiments under the stars of Ophiuchus, the 13th constellation on the ecliptic. And the reason they attempted these experiments when the sun was in front of Ophiuchus is because mythology tells us Ophiuchus is an agent of change. There are according to tradition, five elements assigned to the different constellations on the ecliptic. We all know water, earth, fire, and air. But the fifth element is ether. And the fifth element is the agent of change which transmutes the other four into other uh, types of elements. And so it is not by coincidence that the end of the world and the alignment of our Earth, Sun, and the frozen star at the center of our galaxy occurred under the Bernard Star of Ophiuchus. So according to uh, the Mayan cosmogenesis, the alignment, the perfect alignment uh, between our Earth sun and the center of our galaxy was supposed to occur under the stars of Ophiuchus today. And uh, this, this alignment was supposed to mark the end of an era, the end of a 26,000 year cycle. So we have um, participated uh, in a passive way in um, very historic event, which um, we, we will never ever uh, see again in our lifetimes, of course, and um, nothing happened when the alignment occurred, even though it was a perfect alignment without variation. Uh, This alignment occurs every year around the 17th or the 18th of December, but it fluctuates. The path is not straight to the center of the frozen star at the center of our galaxy. This, this uh, frozen star at the center of our galaxy is essentially a massive uh, star. It's, it's so huge that uh, its gravitational field is so uh, powerful it will not allow light to escape. And when that occurs, um, when light cannot escape, we call these frozen stars black holes. They're very compact, 
and they um, they have a tremendous mass. If an object should travel or come into the gravitational pull, these frozen stars, they would then be um, pulled into this, this, this frozen mass without any hope of escaping its gravitational pull and disintegrate as, uh, as it approached the surface of the frozen star. Frozen stars have something called an event horizon. And this event horizon is essentially the point of no return. Once an object crosses the event horizon, time remains finite. And for the people crossing the event horizon as they're flying towards frozen star, there will seem to be no change in time or space. Everything will remain the same until approximately the time when the disintegration occurs. And so, theoretically, if our sun were to cross the event horizon and then we were to follow crossing the event horizon after our sun, we would really see absolutely no difference in time or space. And um, to us, there would be no indication that such an event has occurred. Uh, it takes approximately 8.34 minutes for sunlight to reach the Earth. Had the man prophecy be true, uh, our sun would have disintegrated by colliding with the frozen star at the center of our galaxy. Now, we would not know this for approximately nine minutes. However, once that occurred, um, we would be next in nine minutes. And so that is the gist of uh, the astronomical basis for uh, the Mayan prophecy. As uh, most people are doing tonight, uh, we are celebrating to um, mark the beginning of a new world. If anything changed since uh, yesterday, it wasn't immediately obvious to most people. There are some people which reported that... um, in the morning hours of their day, they felt a certain up energy, a certain magnetic change in, in their bodies. Um, so there, there have been instances of some changes that have been reported, and um, most of these do not seem to be measurable, uh, but, they, but they do exist because of, because of uh, we know they exist because of the propensity of, of the report. And so, as most people, uh, we are out tonight um, celebrating a new chapter in human history, a new chapter in the history of the world and the universe and everything and the start of the next 26,000-year cycle um, of um, natural time. I would like to thank you all for listening and uh, to uh, encourage you to listen again. This is Reha, uh, wishing you happy new world.